theists' arguments, or at least the ones that I deal with on the show frequently, there's almost a script. And my job or my goal most of the time is to get them off the script because I care more about getting them to think about it rather than parroting what they heard from some apologist. And when you start getting them off the script, it seems to me the most common reaction to that, which may be them mulling over the possibility that they could be wrong, is to just say, oh, that was a trick question. There's a, there's a defense mechanism there as if there's, I don't, and I'm not even sure what a trick question is. I asked you, you know, okay, please explain what you believe and why. What was tricky about that? And yet this seems to be perhaps a defense mechanism that creeps in at those times. If we, I don't know how many others, uh, how many more defense mechanisms, mechanisms like that we might find, uh, but I'm constantly looking for ways to combat them, constantly looking for ways to have a better discussion. Doesn't mean I'm gonna have a good discussion with every single person, but if we see these same trends over and over, how, how do we, maybe there's no answer, but shouldn't we try to identify those trends in the actual thought processes and attack those perhaps more than the facts surrounding the, the underlying belief? Yeah, it is more about process than about facts because the facts change and your, I mean, there's, there's always new ones coming in. And so it's, it's the process by which you are vetting your opinions that I think is, is crucial. And I think it's, it's useful to ask yourself and it's useful to ask someone you're arguing with, what would have to be true of the world for you to admit that you're wrong? Yeah. Like, like what would, how, in what sense is your view on this topic falsifiable? Uh, and often there's no answer to that. You know, often that there's, often there was, and in, especially in the case of religion, you, you'll get people who actually sign on this dotted line, they'll say, you know, the, the, there's absolutely nothing in the world of my experience that could change that would falsify my belief in Jesus, say. And if, and if that's true, well then, that's proof positive that it's actually not based on any engagement with with the, the world of your experience. Although what I'll hear sometimes, the people who will do that have true and unfalsifiable position, but they'll go then to personal experience. For example, Ray Comfort will tell you there's no way you could prove to him that Jesus doesn't exist because he's as real to Ray as his wife. And even when I tried to point out, you can introduce me to your wife and I can you know, meet her and talk to her, right? You can't do that. It doesn't phase. And when I, not to continually to use my mother as an example, sorry, mom, not that she'll ever freaking see this. But she, she will say, uh, she doesn't care about the Bible. She doesn't, or what she, I mean she does, but she doesn't care if you can point out problems with it. Doesn't care about philosophical arguments. Doesn't care about the logical arguments. She sees Jesus working in her life every day. And even if I were to try to go down the route of, I'm willing to accept that you have experiences that you are claiming and attributing to Jesus. I, I just wonder what the justification is for that. That has no impact on her. It may be me, that I, I should never have these conversations with my mom. Mm. Uh, but that's the path that it often goes down when, when they start seeing this, this doubt mechanism coming in of, oh, no, no, it couldn't be true because of this, of this experience that I have. As skeptics, as critical thinkers, I, I would, I don't know, in much the same way that I, I talked about perhaps not addressing the facts as much as the mechanisms, I think there's a, a value for a campaign to teach people to stop being so confident about their interpretation of their personal experiences. Because all of those seem to be an argument from ignorance. I, I experienced this, I have no explanation for it, therefore it must be God, or therefore it's a ghost, or therefore this pill worked, or this whatever worked. 